I'm Chris DeRose, Chief Executive Officer at MERS, and I'm excited to welcome you to the City of Detroit for the 71st Annual MERS Conference. We are excited to be back in Detroit, a city that has a rich and storied history, a city working hard to put bankruptcy behind it and become a magnet for jobs and a vibrant place to live and to work. Over the last few years, uh, for those of you that have attended the MERS Annual Conference, you've had the pleasure, uh, some might say the agony, of watching me open the conference with a focus on retirement readiness. I've talked about the global statistics. We spent a fair amount of time talking about the, our individual participants and getting them ready for retirement. Last time we were in Detroit, we rolled our, what is now the nationally acclaimed retirement readiness program that MERS has for all of our participants. Part of this initiative was what we call snapshot reports or retirement readiness reports. These are the reports that we mail to you every year and say whether we think you're ready for retirement or not. And we did that mailing just a few weeks ago. So how many by a show of hands have received their snapshot or their retirement ready? Oh my goodness, good, that's wonderful. That's exactly what we want. So the other thing that we're encouraging you to do is to go online through MIMERS and, and fill out your full picture report builder. So this allows you to tailor it to your specific circumstances and figure out whether you're ready for retirement or not or will be ready for retirement. And if you're not, it gives you specific suggestions. So how many of you have had the opportunity to go online and actually fill out a full picture report builder? Ah, wonderful, great news. Now that's less than, uh, you know, than the number of people that receive their snapshot reports and that's okay because by the time you leave this conference, you will have more incentive and more initiative to go on and a better understanding of why you should fill out the full picture report. And our hope is that you'll be encouraging everyone that you work with to do the same. So this morning, I don't have any time machines, I don't have any props, we don't have a painter who's going to illuminate a picture as you've seen in the past. You just get me standing in front of these letters that spell out retirement. In fact, instead of a, a specific conference theme this year, we just called it the Retirement Conference because that's what we're all here to focus on. In fact, to thank you for taking the time to take a day and a half on these issues, we're adding a year of service if you have a defined benefit plan, and we're going to put $5,000 if you have a defined contribution plan in your account. Yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah. No. Uh. It's good. I'm glad you're paying attention. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, so we are filming, we are filming this. And just to be clear, I was kidding. That's, that, that's a joke. So, I do want to start this morning talking about our purpose, uh, what we believe. Um, it's why those of us who work at MERS um, come to work. So, Around the room, you'll see MERS staff. We're the ones with the, the green tag at the bottom. Um, and and this, is, this is what we're all about. For us, everything we do is to ensure that you have what you need financially for retirement. It, it's a really simple business model. We provide great customer service, and we keep our costs really low. So it's, it's that simple. In two words, we call it superior value. We do this by creating a team of people. We hire a team of people that, that, that care about others and care about you. And we listen to what you need and to what you need us to partner with. That's it. That's what we do. So whether you're sitting in a, a, a session in the next day and a half on unfunded accrued liability or Social Security, or you're beginning to learn about our latest innovation, a private health care exchange, there's one common goal here, to provide quality retirement benefits that will help you and your employees prepare for a financially stable retirement. And those of us in this room know that's not an easy task. There continues to be a savings crisis in our country. We're living longer, and as a consequence, we need to save more and we need more money to fund our pensions. In defined contribution plans, saving strategies such as annual escalations, 
catch-up contributions are the tools that we can use to move closer to our goals. And for the younger people in the room out there it, it, who are early in their careers, it may be difficult to imagine you know, that 30 or 40 years from now you're going to be retiring. I think the question for all of us is how can we persuade our, our younger peers, coworkers, our children, even our grandchildren, that it's so important to start saving now, that every dollar matters, and that the power of compounding can be one of the greatest allies that we have when saving. I will never forget, early in my career, uh, still in my 20s, somebody took me aside, we had a 457 at my employer, took me aside and said, Chris, even if you can put $5 a pay away, and I can't remember whether we, we ended up putting $5 a pay, uh, we had you know, a young family and college debt and that sort of thing, I can't remember if we put $5 or $20 a pay away, but I can tell you that many years later that has, that has served us well and started that habit of, of saving. So uh, I really want to encourage all of us to, to take those young people aside and get them started. Another barrier is that people simply are not making a plan for the future. In fact, more than a third of Americans have no financial plan for the future. So think about it this way. Would you uh, take uh, a walk or a hike down an unknown trail without either doing some research or bringing a map or a GPS or a compass or something? Well, probably not. And the same thing is true of this journey that we talk, we talk about on our way to retirement. It requires careful planning. And one of the tools that MERS participants have is that access to that full picture report builder that's available on your My MERS account. Just doing that will get you a significant ways down that road to be ready for retirement. So by a show of hands, how many of you invest in some type of retirement account, either with MERS or with some other company? Yeah, pretty much everybody, right? So now, second question, and how many of you are absolutely confident that you have the knowledge of the funds you are investing in and that you're making the right choices based on your personal scenario? Oh, come on, some of you must. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's not uncommon. 42% uh, of Americans don't know how their investments are allocated. For a lot of people, reading those fund status reports that we get at least, at least quarterly, that's like reading a book in a foreign language. And when you factor in concepts like compounding and inflation, it can really turn off some of our most vulnerable audiences from learning about these vital, vital concepts. So uh, over the next few months, you're going to see an intensifying effort by MERS to address the issue of investment education by providing some new resources. As more and more people begin using invested accounts, defined contribution accounts, we call them PDA accounts, as a means for retirement savings rather than pensions, the need for investment education is growing. So by helping our participants to understand the benefits of compounding, the effect of inflation, and the various investment fund, op fund options we are going to begin building that foundation of knowledge that everyone needs to prepare for retirement. This afternoon, we're going to welcome back Dr. Daniel Crosby. You may recall Daniel spoke to us in 2014, and his expertise is in behavioral finance, which is those natural tendencies that all of us have that drive the decisions we make on spending and savings, often not in our best interest. So he'll be back to talk to us about his recent research and experiments, and we'll be able to use what he is going to teach us and help us with to better prepare for retirement and better prepare our coworkers for retirement. Speaking of preparation, let's talk for a minute about financial wellness. Financial wellness is this concept of looking at one's finances from a holistic perspective that takes into consideration earning, spending, and savings behaviors. Many in this room are probably very adept at these things. You do this very well in your personal lives, but we now know that to get people ready for retirement, we've got to start way earlier than, than the 50s and 60s. So financial wellness is something you're going to hear a lot more about from MERS, and it's got really four key topics. The first of the topics is reviewing the spending habits and learning how to budget your money wisely. We want people to start early in their careers, early in their lives. The second is we'll highlight debt management 
and the ways to reduce your debt before you get to retirement. The third is emergency savings. This is being prepared in case you find yourself in an unexpected situation. Perhaps a job loss, uh, perhaps you have an illness and you're in the hospital for a long period of time or even frankly a short period of time, and you come out with a huge bill. So having some money set aside to manage emer uh, um, emergencies. And finally, having a plan for the future. If you put each of these topics together, these are the four pillars of a holistic financial wellness program. If you couple it with the snapshot reports that we're going to send to you and you do your full picture uh, builder, we think you're going to have the tools necessary to be ready for retirement and be working toward what we're calling financial wellness. So this morning I've talked to you about the four key aspects of retirement, saving, planning, investing, and preparation. I urge you to use the next two days finding elements of each of these breakout sessions and general sessions that you sit in to enhance your knowledge in these areas. I challenge each of you to become a financial wellness ambassador after this conference and use the, the education that you receive to help your coworkers, help in your personal life, and help those around you. A personal story, um, I have a, 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 a neighbor, uh, the adult child of, of a neighbor, who reached out to me at a neighborhood gathering um, and wanted, he, he said, you know, I've got some money, I'd like to invest in the stock market. And so and he and I have been, have been meeting, working through the steps that I just described to you. I'm helping him understand what a budget is, build a budget, make sure that he's not spending more than he's taking in. The next step is creating the emergency account. We, we've taken that step. Next, we'll move into some basic education based on his, his risk tol tolerances without giving him specific advice, but kind of walking him, walking him through that. And I have to tell you that I'm using the resources that are on the MERS and MISH website uh, to work him through this, and, and I found those very helpful. So there are resources there for you to use to help people, even if all you're doing is steering them toward those resources. So in a few minutes, you'll have the opportunity to hear from the members of Governor Snyder's Responsible Retirement Task Force. This afternoon, after lunch, as I mentioned, Dr. Daniel Crosby will be here to give an engaging and energetic keynote address. Tonight, we'll gather on the Detroit Princess for another fun boat ride down the Detroit River. Tomorrow, you'll get updates on the state of MERS portfolio and the investment industry as a whole. And then we'll move to the annual business meeting and elect two new board members from MERS. So please don't stop, don't hesitate to uh, stop me or the others of us that have the green tags. Give us your feedback, ask us your questions. We're here to help and partner with you. With that, let me turn it over to MERS Chief Financial Officer, Leon Hank, to introduce the next session. <laughs>